So, uh, all listeners and uh, viewers, uh, good day to all of us. The first part that we have uh, taken is uh, regarding uh, the type of uh, stress, which is the tensile stress. Then we have considered a problem also considering uh, compressive stress. Now, the next type of stress that we are going to have will be the bearing stress and the shearing stress. Now, every time we try to consider a uh, shearing stress problem and a bearing stress problem, mostly the uh, illustration or the figure involved, the element involved, is always the same. So in this case, I am to going to take a certain problem where the two types of stresses are involved. That is the bearing stress and the shearing stress. So we have here a problem that is two metal plates made of AISI C1022 steel as well, are riveted together. The plates and the rivet are made of the same material. A force of 2,000 pounds repeated in reverse acts on the connection. Determine the diameter of the rivet and the dimensions P and H of the plate where H is equal to 3T based on yield strength and ultimate strength. So we have here the two plates which are riveted together. So this is the side view and this is the top view. On the top view, we have a, I have uh, just simply taken into consideration the diameter of the rivet here, not the head of the rivet. So if there will be a force that will act on the two plates in here, for uh, the tendency in here, especially if the uh, rivet is weak, so that the rivet will be the one that will fail. So if the rivet will fail in here, due to the action of the force, this rivet will fail in terms of shearing stress. So if this rivet fails in terms of shearing spread, and as we can see, this is just a single rivet. So being a single rivet, therefore, there is only one shear area. So there is only one area under shear. So if there is only one area under shear, we will have the shearing stress referred to as a single shear. So that is because we have only one shear area. So from the problem itself, we have here the given data that is the material we have, of course, is AISIC 1022 steel at all. The force is 2,000 pounds. There is a condition that X is equal to 3T. And we are required to find for the value of T, that is the diameter of the ribbon. T, that is the thickness of the plate. And X, is the width of the plate. The solution, of course, will start 
by taking the property of the material. That is because our basis of design is based on near the strength and ultimate strength. So we take them from table 87, page 576, Design of Machine Elements by Bill Hill for page. For AISI C1022 steel, a strong. The year distress is 52 KSI. And the ultimate distress is 72 KSI. From page 20, design of machine elements by Bill Hill Morin Fair. For the ticket and reverse, our Factor of safety based on year is four. Factor of safety based on ultimate is eight. And we consider the design is rest based on year that is SY over NY or 52 KSI divided by four that is 13 KSI. The design is rest based on ultimate will be SU over NU which will be equal to 72 KSI divided by 8, or that is 9 KSI. To be able to take the diameter of the rivet, that is for the diameter of the rivet, based on their strength, we subject the rivet that is in terms of shear. Now, I have illustrated in here that the upper portion of the river passed over the lower portion of the river. So the searing area will be this or this one. That is on the cross section of the river, which the cross section of the river illustrated in here. That is undergoing single shear. It is single shear, that's a mistake. That is because there is only one shearing area. So the area under shear now, because this is a circular cross section, that is pi d squared over 4. Having the force equal to 2,000 pounds here. So the design is nice based on here is equal to F over A. That is 13 KSI equal to 2,000 pounds all over pi D square all over 4. Or D now is equal to the square root of 4 times 2,000 all over 5 times 13,000, which will give us 0.443 of an inch. Again, going back to, those, to that principle referring to the preferred size, we have here, that is, the computed value is 443, and the lower value of 0.443 is 4375, which is fractional equivalent of 7 over 16. So we check in that from 0.443 minus 0.4375 all over 0.443 multiplied by 100 will give us a percentage less than 4 to 5 percent. So if we have a percentage difference of less than 4 to 5 percent, we can use the lower value. That is now, oh, wait, wait. More than, I have a note in here, that is more than 5 percent. So if it is more than 5%, we cannot use, we cannot use the lower value. 
So we use kilo higher value. So that will be equal to 0.5 or fractional equivalent of one half. So that is the diameter of the rivet based on here undergoing single shear. Now for uh, the uh, diameter of the rivet based on ultimate strength, that is the sine stress based on ultimate is equal to F over A. So that is the design stress is 9 KSI equal to 2,000 pounds over 5 squared over 4. So considering the diameter of the rivet now based on ultimate trend, which will now be equal to D, is equal to the square root of 4 times 2,000 pounds all over 5 multiplied by the quantity 9,000 pounds per inch squared which will give us 0.532 as the computed value. So we check it from that principle of preferred side test, that is 0.532 is within the range of 3 over 16 to 7 over 8. So if within that range, the denominator of the fraction that we we use will be over 16. So, checking it from the lower value, 0.532 minus 0.5, divided by 0.532 multiplied by 100%, that will give us more than 5%. So, if it is more than 5%, we use the higher value, which the higher value we have here is 9 over 16. 9 over 16 of an inch. So considering the uh, thickness of the plate, which from the illustration that we have, that is that uh, the uh, rivets and the plates are connected. So there will be a point of contact between the rivet and the plate. So from here you can see if this is our rivet, this rivet came from this slab, which, as you can see, that is a half circle arc because of the hole, hole on the metal plate. So, if that is a cut on the axis where the rivet is located, we will have here a half moon area. So the point of contact will be between the river and the surface of the hole where the river is placed. So that you will have a circular area here. But for circular contact, circular contact, that arc in there will be, can be disregarded. And we can simply repair or consider it to be a 
rectangle. So that our bearing area now will be the diameter, diameter of the rivet and the thickness of the plane. So that will be our bearing area. So having that bearing area equal to TD or TD. <coughs> From based on yield strength, the design stress based on yield will be equal to F over A. So we will have it equal to 2,000 pounds divided by T multiplied by T or 13 KSI equal to 2,000 pounds T multiplied by 0.433 of an inch. So that T now will be equal to 2,000 pounds or over 0.433 multiplied by the quantity 13,000. Or that will be equal to 0 0.347. So 0 0.347 is within the range of 3 over 60 to 7 over 8. So the denominator of the fraction of an inch that we can use is over 60. So having the computed value at 0.347, our lower value is 3 over 8. That is 0.3125. Our higher value is 7 over 16. That is 0.375. Taking 0.347 minus 3125. Minus 3125. So divided by 0.347 multiplied by 100%, that is less than 4%. So if it is less than 4%, as is stated, we will use the lower value. So that is equal to. 3 over 8. So find for x is x, which is now equal to 3 key, 3 multiplied by 0.347. So that is 1.041. 1.041 is within the range of 7 over 8 to 3. So the denominator of the fraction that we are going to use is over 8. The lower value here is 1, higher value is 1.125, equivalent to 1 and 1 eight. So 1.041 subtracting 1 will give us 0 0.041. Divided by 1.041, that will give us less than 4%. So we can use the lower value x now will be equal to 1 inch, or we use 1 inch. Now, based on ultimate strength, so the only thing that will change is the design stress in here. So that T now will be equal to 2,000 pounds all over 0.443 multiplied by 9,000 which will give us equal to 0 0.501 of an inch. Again, we put it on the preferred size, that is lower value is 0 0.5. So we can check it from 0 0.5 immediately, that is 0 0.501 minus 0 0.5 will give us 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.5, that will give us a less 
to one percent. So if it is less than four percent, we use the lower value, which will now be equal to one half of an eight. Then x is equal to three by five point point five zero one or one point five zero three. Again, lower value is one point five. Higher the computer value is one point five zero three. 1.503 subtracting 1.5 by dividend of 0 0.003 divided by a full number that will decrease less than 4%. So we can use the lower value, therefore, x is equal to 1 and 1 half. Now we'll uh, try to consider the uh, second problem involving sharing stress and bearing stress. So as he stated, for the lock joint, the plates material has a bearing strength of 440 megapascal and the tensile strength of 480 megapascal. The shearing stress in the rivet is 240 megapascal. Determine the, dia the diameter of the rivets, the thickness of the plate, and width. Based on a factor of safety of four on yield strength and a force of 56.5 kilo newton. Now, as you notice, the unit involved in here for the previous problem, we have. Uh, uh, discussed involving the system of unit. Now, on this problem, we have the unit in terms of the SI system. Now, that is one problem we have in the design of machine elements or machine design with respect to the units that are being used. Especially here in the Philippines, we know that we have already adopted the SI system of units. But there are still in the board examination for mechanical engineers, there are still problems which involve which involve English units, such as inches, pounds, and so on. So there are also problems where the unit involved is in the, in the SI system. So in considering the design of machine elements, or studying this machine design in the Philippines, there are two considerations that we have to take. We have to take into consideration when we are in the field applying machine design, or when we are going to take a licensure exam. So those are the two considerations that uh, we have to take, which is another burden 
another problem for mechanical engineering graduates. They are going to ask themselves, am I going to study mechanical engineering for having the license or securing a license or I am going to take mechanical engineering studying machine design so that I can apply it in the industry. So those are the two questions for taking mechanical engineering. That is why in teaching or discussing machine design, that is also a problem on the, on the professor, whether he is going to use a SI system of unit or the English system of units. So in this case, we have solved some problems involving English system of units. Now we take uh, a problem involving or using the SI system of units. So one, one relationship that or conversion factor that is very important in considering SI system of units, of course, from the uh, uh, other relationships, such as the relationship of a kilogram to a pound or kilogram force to a pound or the relationship of the Newton to a pound. So those are the relationships. Relationship. But what is one thing important is this relationship, which uh, one megapascal is equivalent to one, one newton per square millimeter. This is one important relationship in considering a problem in machine design involving SI system of units. So we have here the problem that is there are two plates which are joined together by three rivets. So there are three rivets in here connecting or joining the two metal plates. So we are given in here the uh, the material strength, which for the material that is the shearing or shearing stress, that will be equal to 240 megapascal. For bearing stress, that is 440 megapascal. For tensile stress, that is 480 megapascal with a factor of safety based on year of four and a force of 56.5 kilo newton. So we are asked here to find for the D, that is the diameter of the river. T, that is the thickness of the plane. X, that is the width of the plane. So first, we consider the rivets which will undergo shear. Now, because there are three rivets here, three rivets which will undergo shearing. So, if they fail in terms of shear, this will be cut at this portion. So that this portion, the right portion in here, will move to the right, this to the left, so that the, the uh, rivets will undergo shearing. Upper portion pass over the lower 
portion. So, as is stated, there are three rivets. So, this will be referred to as a multiple shearing or triple shear because there are three areas of concern. That is why for the rivets under shear, which the general form of the equation is the sign of stress over the force equal to the force divided by the area, which the design stress can be taken at 60 megapascal. Our shearing area, our shearing area here, there are three rivets. There are three rivets. So that is 3A. That is the shearing area. In this particular problem, not on all cases, the A or the shearing area, which in this case is multiplied by 3, it is because there are 3 shearing area particular on this problem, not on all cases. If there are four shearing area, that A will be multiplied by four, or there are two areas of concern that will simply be multiplied by two. In this case, there are three, so that is three A for the Shearing area. That is why we have here that is the design stress of 60 megapascal is equal to the force at 56.5 kilo newtons divided by 3. That is the 3 we have here. And this is the area of 1 of the cross sectional area of. We leave it by b squared over 4. So the g now will be equal to the square root of 4. This 4 in here will go up with the 56.5 kilonewton divided by 3 pi multiplied by the quantity 60 mega pascal. Now, we try to consider the unit involved in here in this thing. How come that we have arrived to millimeter unit in here? So we have here a kilo newton. So kilo newton in here, so that this kilo term, the letter K, will simply be cancelled out by multiplying that 1 by 10 to the 3 so that the remaining unit on the or here is newton simply newton and this mega pascal unit here which i have stated that one mega pascal is equal to one Newton per square millimeter. So this megapascal term will be cancelled out by one Newton per square millimeter. So megapascal unit there is cancelled out. Then the Newton term here will be cancelled out. The remaining unit in terms of the square millimeter, which if we take the square of that, will give us simply millimeter. So we have here 4 by 56.5 times 10 to the 3 divided by 3 pi all over 60, we will have it at 19 point. 
99 millimeter. Say D is equal to 20 millimeter. Now, in practice, in practice, we have to think or consider that 19.99 to 20 millimeter. We cannot take a value less than the 19.99 millimeter here because that will pain. That will be over stress. But if we try to uh, round it up, say 20 millimeter, that is safer. Safe in here, more than safe in here. A matter of 0 0.01 millimeter. So we can round it up to 20 millimeter. So that is the diameter of the river. Now, having the bearing between the rivets and the plate. Bearing between the rivets and the plate. So we can see there are again three areas involved because there are three rivets. So if there are three rivets, there will be three points of contact to the plate so that the bearing area is multiplied by three. In this particular case, because there are three areas of concern, we multiply it by three, not on all cases. So the design stress is equal to F over 3A. Having the design stress at 110 megapascal, 110 megapascal equal to 56.5 kilonewton over 3 multiplied by 20 millimeter multiplied by T. T therefore is, T therefore will be equal to, that is, a kilonewton term here with a megapascal term, the process you will have will still be the same with this one. So the unit that will be remaining will be a unit in terms of the millimeter. That is why we have the T at 8.56 millimeter. Say, nine millimeters for the thickness of the plate. Now for the width of the plate, that can be taken if we try to undergo the plate in terms of tension, subjected to tensile stress. So the design stress is equal to to tension stress over the factor of 50, that is 120 megapascal. The area, that is the thickness, multiplied by x. That is, this is the thickness here, and this is the width in here. So, you will have the resisting area. As you can see, the portion here is along the horizontal. So therefore, the area that will resist the action of the force is along the vertical, because they are perpendicular to each other, as is stated before. No? So the sine stress of 120 megapascal equal to the force of 56.54 56.5 kilonewton divided by 9 mm, 9 millimeters, multiplied by h. So that the width of the plate 
will be equal to 52.31 millimeter. Say 53 millimeters. That is for the weight of the plate. 